let's talk about the 16 ways to sell your artwork and to make money and live your dream selling and making money as an artist. Welcome to the Artist Life Podcast with Dina Tollefson. I'm so glad to have you here today. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you are coming back, welcome back. I'm here to guide you as an artist in the process of getting your work out there and to earn money as an artist in ways that you may not have even known were possible. And in today's videos, I'm going to take you through all the different 16 methods, and I'll, I'll share with you some tips about them and some pros and some cons of each approach. So if you are an artist and you have been dreaming about selling your artwork to clients and living a dream of, of making money as an artist, this is the video for you. So be sure to stay all the way through this video because I'm going to be sharing with you some super valuable information that you're not going to want to miss. So here's the first method. And I also want to point out that these are not in any particular order. So the first method is Etsy. So Etsy is a fantastic way to earn money as an artist, especially if you're just starting out. So go to Etsy.com and they make it super easy to set up your store and to get started. So you decide um, what it is that you're going to sell, whether it's stickers or original artwork, drawings, gicles, merchandise, uh, whatever it is that you want to sell. And then um, a client will come to the Etsy site and then we'll look at what you're offering and then, um, and then we'll say that they're going to purchase it and then you will ship it to them. Etsy takes a small commission on every sale that you make and keep in mind that the more extras and add-ons that you add in with the Etsy store, uh, the more the little higher, higher uh, transaction fee that they will charge. So I'm a professional full-time artist. Um, I was trained as an engineer and then uh, let's see here. 11 years ago, I left engineering just to do art full time. So I've been doing uh, selling art in galleries since the year 2000. And I remember the first time that a stranger bought my artwork and oh my goodness, it's so exciting. It's such a personal, you know, an elated feeling that that you get. And so I want you to be able to have that feeling if you haven't made an art sale yet. And I'm hopeful that this video is going to get you on the trajectory to getting your work out there and, and making art sales. So a pro of working with Etsy on their site is that they have low transaction fees. So it's only six to 15% of the sale of your work is going to be going to Etsy and you get to keep the rest. Now a con is that you're going to have to do all of the marketing and the um, uh, attention getting of the public, getting them over to Etsy to, you know, to look at your site and to purchase your work. So Etsy does not do the marketing for that. That's something that you would need to, um, to get people drawn in. But that's a con of working with Etsy is you have to do all the marketing. Okay, so method number two is Amazon. Amazon, if you go to amazon.com, um, you can see there's actually quite a few different ways that you can sell your artwork and make money as an artist on Amazon. So some things that you can do is uh, you can you can create an art book or an ebook and sell that through Amazon Publishing. Uh, you could set up a storefront and sell merch uh, of your artwork that you create and that you sell directly to the um, to people who buy online. Uh, you could sell your originals through Amazon. Um, and then there's another thing you can do is do uh, something that I do through Amazon is I, I'm a Amazon influencer. So I have an influencer page where Amazon goes and I get a um, small commission from them if someone comes to my Amazon influencer page and then purchases art supplies from that. It's no additional cost to the uh, person purchasing, but I do get a small commission from that. So, um, so there are lots of different ways that you can do things through Amazon. So the pros of, Am of working with Amazon is they have a fantastic search engine um, and they also have a, a very a widely known reputation. A lot of people shop through Amazon. Now the negatives 
are that um, if you're dealing and, and um, sending things directly, so the uh, Amazon influencing thing that I do, I don't actually deal with any specific merchandise. I'm just giving recommendations. So I don't have to actually have any inventory here uh, in my studio. Um, if you are actually shipping things or you're selling things like artwork or merchandise um, directly to the consumer, then you'll need to be thinking about where you're going to store everything. Um, so there's uh, the logistics of shipping things and then there's the logistics of storage and, um, and, and all of the logistics with that. All right, so now, okay, so now number three. The number three method, and again, these are in no particular order, but the number three method um, for making money as an artist is eBay. So eBay is similar to selling on Amazon, but you have more price flexibility. So you can price your work as a buy it now kind of a thing where you have a price, say the price is $100, and if they have $100, then they click on it and, and they can buy it. Or you can set it up as a auction type of method where you'd set a minimum. Let's say you wanted at least $60 for this item and you have it set for, you know, maybe a hundred or more and, and people are going to bid on it. And so if it doesn't at least meet the $60 threshold, then it doesn't sell. But if it sells higher than that, then you're happy. Hey, I've made the money I wanted. And if it can sell higher than that in the amount of time given, then you make even more money. So, um, so there are different ways or different techniques, different philosophies for how to price things on eBay. But a lot of artists sell their artwork, their originals, um, through eBay this way. Uh, one thing that you can do is you can protect yourself by setting that minimum price. And eBay does take a 13% commission on the sales that are made. And so what you'll do is you'll go to ebay.com and then you set up a storefront and then have digital images of the items that you want to sell. So the pros are it's uh, very easy to use, it's well known, and also um, you don't have to have a lot of inventory. You could have maybe just one thing or, or multiple things, but you don't have to have a lot of things listed for sale. So the cons are that um, when an item sells, you'll need to do the shipping and get it sent, sent safely over to your customer. And then um, also they don't do any advertising for you, any marketing or advertising or things that a, um, that a traditional gallery would do. Um, you have to do all the things to draw people to your eBay site uh, so that they know, um, that you, you know that you're there and then to come in and to bid on your items. All right, so method number four is Instagram. So how this works is you'll create reels or posts, photos of your work, videos of your work, and um, up in the description, uh, you'll have your photo and then you can list your website if you have a website. Um, if you don't have a website, you can just sell directly off of Instagram by having, um, having them uh, just put on your thing that says uh, DM me for prices or direct message for uh, pricing or for sales. And so clients who are interested in your work can go in and then send you a direct message and you will agree on a price and the cost for the shipping. And then that's it. Then you can go ahead and send them. You can uh, want to be sure if you're doing this to use something like PayPal. Uh, you don't want to have them send you a check because the that's one of the pro or one of the cons of Instagram is that if you do that, um, that you can get scammed easily, or they can say, "Oh, I'll send you a check for larger than the amount," or "I'll send you this," or whatever, and then it looks like it's going to clear, and then it turns out that it was a bad check. So you definitely want to do something like PayPal or a Venmo or something like that so that um, you can be sure that you are protected as the artist. And then once the payment, you wait till the payment comes and then you would ship the work to them. So I personally do not do, um, I personally don't do any sales this way because the galleries that represent me would kick me out <laughs> if they thought I was selling or if, if they knew that I was selling um, you know, directly to clients. So I don't, I don't do anything like that. But, um, but for those artists, I actually do have a friend um, from France and she makes her whole uh, living 
uh, just selling her art on Instagram, and she does phenomenally well with it. So a pro of Instagram is that there's no transaction fee. You don't pay anything to Instagram uh, for this transaction. So you get to keep all of the money that was made. And then a con of Instagram is that um, there's a lot of competition out there. So there are there's a lot of art that's out there. And so um, it's not uh, curated in a way that people can easily see. So you have to build up your audience. You have to do all of the marketing and the promotion of that. And then um, you'll also have to do the shipping and do, you know, all the logistics associated with that. All right. So number five is selling to friends or relatives as a direct sale. Uh, So this is the way that most artists make their first sale. So you make some artwork and then someone close to you, a friend or relative, somebody that you know really well, um, approaches you or you approach them and then they buy it from you. And this first sale is so important and oh my goodness, it feels so good. And you'll probably never forget your first art sale. It's such a special thing in your art career. And when you make that first sale, it it gives you such a confidence. And so really all that you'll need to do in order to make that first sale is to first of all, uh, be making artwork, but then let people know, let people know that you are willing to let it go, that you're willing to sell it and, and that you would like to sell your artwork and, you know, give them opportunities where they can, you know, we don't want to be pushy with it or anything, but, you know, let them know that, um, that you are selling your art. And if something resonates with them, then they should let you know. And also be thinking ahead of time, um, what kind of price you would like to charge uh, for each of the different artworks that you have, just uh, make a price list or be thinking about the prices ahead of time. And then I do have a video, a set of videos out um, that go through how to price your artwork to sell, how to get your art ready to sell, that kind of thing. So if you haven't had a chance yet to check those videos out, um, be sure to do that after this video. All right, number six, Zazzle and Redbubble. So Zazzle.com and Redbubble.com are online sites that you can upload uh, your digital files of um, uh, JPEGs of photos that you've taken, photos that you've taken, or uh, digital files of digital art that you've created. And you upload that to their site, and then the public can come and buy that on merchandise. And then in return, you're going to get a royalty, and that's typically 12% of a royalty of every sale that was made. So if... uh, So let's see, I guess if something sells for $10, then you would get 12% of that, which would be $1.20 off of the sale of, you know, anything that's made, which is really exciting and a lot of fun. And then also this is a way to get your name known. Uh, Your name will be associated with your artwork. That's just another way to to get your artwork out there. So the pros of redbubble.com and zezzle.com are that they take care of doing all of the marketing for you. So all you have to really do is just get these things uploaded. And then, um, and then when the public buys something of yours, um, it's very easy to get payment. Now the negative is that there is a ton of competition. Lots and lots and lots of artists are out on redbubble.com and zazzle.com. But I encourage you to give it a try and, and, uh, and just see, um, see what resonates uh, with the public. All right, number seven is Saatchi Art and other online only art galleries. And you can sell your artwork without having to have a personal website. Uh, You can sell it through SachiArt.com. And Sachi is one of many online only artwork selling platforms. So you can sell original artwork, you could sell prints, um, you can sell um, other art merchandise um, through these sites. Uh, Sachi Art is probably the most famous of the online only sites. Um, they don't take any kind of a upfront fee. Uh, they do charge 40% for commission, and um, but they take care of shipping. Unless the customer for some reason returns the artwork, in which case you likely will have to pay um, for, the, uh, for the return fee. So that's something to be aware of, um, especially if you're making large art, which can be very expensive to ship. 
um, if the cost of the art versus the cost of shipping it, if that isn't in balance, um, that's something to be aware of. But I know a lot of artists who, um, who do online art galleries. So Saatchi, for example, has a, a, the pros of Saatchi, it has a very good reputation. And the cons are that they have so many artists in their roster, there's a lot of competition. So where number seven is an online art gallery, number eight is a brick and mortar art gallery. Or in other words, a physical art gallery that has a store or a uh, place where people will actually come and physically look at the art. They likely will also have an online presence, but that people can go and physically see the artwork. Um, that's, a, that's a brick and mortar art gallery. That's, so that's the way that I sell my originals, is through brick and mortar art galleries. I've been doing that since the year 2000, and um, I really enjoy doing it this way. This way that frees me up to just make artwork, and then they take care of the sales, they take care of the shipping, they take care of the marketing, they have beautiful lighting, um, and really everything is taken care of. Now the negative with a brick and mortar gallery is that there's a high, um, there's a high commission fee. So typically 50%. So if a piece of art is a hundred dollars, when it sells, you'll get $50 and the gallery gets $50. If it's a $10,000 painting, you get 5,000 and they get 5,000. So, so there is a high transaction fee um, for all of the marketing and the sales and the beautiful building and you know all the things that they do. Um, so that's something you'll have to decide if that's worth it to you. If, if you're like me and that is worth it to you, I know for myself, I would not be able to make the number of sales that I'm able to make and be able to focus on artwork if it wasn't for the art um, art galleries. They bring clients in and, and they know people that I don't know and you know all of that type of thing. So, so for me, it's a win-win. So there's some pros and cons of being in a brick and mortar gallery. The pro is that you can just ship them the artwork and they take care of everything from there. They do the marketing, they do the merchandising, um, they make it look beautiful, they bring in the clients, they do shipping and correspondence and, and everything from there. Um, the con is that there's that big transaction fee and then also it is very competitive. It's hard to get into an art gallery. So um, and it's hard to stay in an art gallery once you're in. Um, if you aren't making sales, then they typically will drop you. So it's a, <laughs> it's kind of a it's kind of a stressful thing. Number nine is art licensing. So as the artist, you own the copyright to your artwork. So, uh, so if you were to create, for example, a drawing or a painting, and you were to sell that to someone, um, they don't have the copyright to the actual original art itself, and only you do. So always want to make sure that you take really good, high quality photos of your artwork, because you can use those photos um, to do art licensing. And what art licensing is, is this is where manufacturers um, go into a contract with you and they pay you a royalty to use your images um, for certain things like maybe uh, pillows, um, prints, uh, keychains, dishes, shower curtains, bedding, t-shirts, I mean you name it. If, if, if it can be printed on something, there's a manufacturer who, who will need art to license onto that object. So. So uh, it's a great way um, to earn money as an artist, and there are some people who do only art licensing. That's all that they do um, as an artist, and that can be whether they're a traditional artist or a digital artist. And I have been licensing my artwork um, for about the last 10 years, something like that. And what I like about it is that, you know, the originals will sell at a certain price point and not everyone can afford original artwork, but usually everybody can afford, you know, a coffee mug or a print or something like that. So it makes it so that your artwork can be, you know, really appreciated by a wider variety, a wider group of people. And it's a neat way to get your brand out there and to become more well-known. So a typical licensing agreement might be anywhere from 5 to 15% royalty on something that was made. So let's say a pillow sold for, say, $50. 
And if it was a 10% royalty, then you would get $5 for every pillow that was sold. So art licensing is really a fantastic way um, to get merch out there, but it's not merch that you have to necessarily do. The manufacturer, you know, jigsaw puzzles, that type of thing, the manufacturer takes care of creating it, marketing it, selling it, all of that kind of thing. All you have to do is just give them, you know, the image of your artwork, and you don't have to do anything more beyond that. And so that can be, you know, really a, a great way um, so that, there, you know, no space is wasted, you don't have to store anything anywhere, and it's just that digital image. Another great thing is, let's say that you had a drawing or a painting or something that you sold, that image that you took of the thing before you had it go out the door, um, that image can be used over and over and over on various products for years to come and earn you income uh, way beyond the sale of the original work of art. And part of art licensing is that there's a contractual component to this, so um, this can get a little bit complicated. And so I have a, I do have a video um, out on just how to license your artwork. And so I do encourage you also to check that out if you haven't already. So number 10, art festivals and direct sales. So an art festival is where you set up a booth and you sell directly to the public. And these, are, these can be set up indoors or they could be set up outdoors. And it's generally set for a short period of time, maybe a week or a weekend. And this is where the public are invited to come in and to view your work and to purchase work directly from you. And there are juried and non-juried events. So if it's juried, it means that a group of people have come together and decided which artists are going to be able to uh, to be at the event and which will uh, they'll be part of it. And it's a more uh, it's more um, choice or uh, so there are juried events and there are non juried events. So if it's a juried event, that means that a group of people have gotten together and said, OK, this artist and this artist, but not this artist and not this artist. But these two artists can come in or this group of artists or 10 artists or 100 artists. These artists can come in and are specifically selected for the event. Non juried is not as selective. So that means that really anybody who pays the booth fee or the setup fee, uh, the festival fee, anybody who would like to participate can participate in a non-juried event. And art festivals are found everywhere. Uh, they're found locally, they're found across the country, and you can uh, find them and search for them by going, uh, looking online, and then searching for art festivals. And you could be really specific and say art festivals and then name your city, or you could um, you know, name your local area and then to find which ones are going to be set up. And typically, they will, um, they will organize and get set up um, months and sometimes even years ahead of time. So you typically will pay a booth fee or an art festival fee to participate, and then you'll have to pay for your lodging if it's not local to you, um, any of your expenses like food, um, any, anything setting up the table, your art display, uh, any kind of merchandising materials. But basically everything that you sell, you get to keep. So they aren't going to take any kind of a fee for any kind of sales that you make. So that can really be fantastic. And this type of sales venue is ideal for artists who enjoy uh, interacting directly with the public and for those who, um, who like to get up and close and, and, you know, look and see directly, you know, how do people react to their artwork and enjoy uh, doing direct sales. So that's like a perfect venue for someone who enjoys that and also someone who likes to travel. So if you're going to be doing an art festival that's not local to you, you're going to need to travel with your artwork and your booth and possibly a tent if it's an outdoor venue. So uh, so for those who enjoy traveling for that, that can be an added bonus. Now, the pros of an art festival is that you can make a lot of money if your art does well. Uh, the cons are that if your art does not do well at the event, you actually could end up losing money um, after the booth fee or the tent fee and after your lodging and all of your expenses and your time spent, you end up actually, uh, you could actually lose money. All right, number 11. So number 11 is a farmer's market uh, form of direct sale. And a farmer's market is very similar to an art festival 
except it is uh, a couple of differences. A uh, farmer's market is a recurring event. So whereas a uh, an art festival is going to just be like a couple day or up to a week event, a farmer's market is usually like one day and then it's held like, for example, every Thursday or every Saturday for maybe for the summer months or for the winter months. And it also could be indoors or it could be outdoors. But farmer's markets tend to be less competitive. They're less, um, uh, there's less competition. There's, uh, usually there's not a, uh, a group judging who's going to be in the farmer's market. And the fees in order to participate are much lower. Oftentimes it might even be free to participate in the farmer's market. Uh, or you might have just a small booth fee or a space fee that you pay, but it is usually very nominal compared to what you would pay uh, at an art festival. And things that you can sell at an art festival would be original art. Uh, you could sell your merchandise like stickers, t-shirts, um, mugs, you know, really anything that you wanted to sell at the farmer's market. And this, just like the uh, art festival, a farmer's market is super ideal uh, if you are really enjoying interacting with, with the public, with people, and if you like to sell directly. And a benefit of a farmer's market is that over time, you'll get to know uh, the space around you, you'll get to know the people around you, the other vendors, and you will get to know also the, um, the, the clientele that are coming. They'll get to see you over time. So something that you can uh, just to be aware of, a farmer's market is going to have more than just artwork. So an art festival is set up. It's really just focused on artwork, and there might be some food that they're selling, but it's really just designed for selling art. A farmer's market, on the other hand, is a thing uh, for oftentimes, you know, produce, uh, things that are raised on a farm, um, things that are made plants, um, artwork, uh, just a wider variety of things. And so you're going to get a different client that is coming, which can be good and it can be bad um, as far as making art sales. Uh, art, uh, when people come to an art festival, they're intending to see art and to buy art um, or at least have a, a nice day looking at art. When they go to a farmer's market, they may or may not be expecting to see artwork. Now, one thing that you can do, a pro of being in a farmer's market, is that you can actually be making your artwork during the downtime. You can be uh, creating art and people can come up and, and watch you making your art. And a con about being in a farmer's market is that you're going to need to be there regularly. So whereas the art festival is kind of a one-time deal, the farmer's market, it's a commitment to be there for a certain number of days or a certain number of events, uh, weekends or, or evenings or, or whenever their farmer's market is set for. And it also could be in clement weather. So that's also, I guess, a con with the, um, with the art festivals. You could deal with bad weather. But, um, but in a farmer's market, you know, you might be dealing with bad weather if it's an outdoor event. Okay, number 12, teaching art. Teaching art is a wonderful way to earn money as, an, as a working artist. So you can teach workshops or you can teach classes um, at a very casual one-on-one -on -one level all the way up through teaching at the university level. So the pros of teaching art is that it can be a great source of income. And in some cases, you don't need an art degree in order to, to teach art or to teach workshops or to teach uh, how to make art. Um, and then the cons are that uh, in some cases, you do need a degree. If you don't have one, you do need a teaching degree, and it can be competitive. Um, some of these slots uh, as art instructors are very competitive to get into. So way to earn money as an artist, number 13, is your own website. So you might be wondering, why do I need my own website um, when I can just, you know, put my art out in other locations? Well, the one thing that's super nice about having your own website, your own art website, is that you get to control how it looks. Um, you'll also get to focus when someone comes to your website, they're really just focusing on you. So that's really nice in a sea of artists um, when someone comes to to visit your website you are you know you are the star so some things that i do on my personal website my art website is i have my curriculum vitae i have my biography and artist statement um, examples of my work 
Uh, now, since I don't sell directly originals directly off of my website, I have art galleries do that. I have examples, but I don't put the prices. If you are selling and wanting to sell your originals, absolutely put those prices on there and then you can sell directly from your website, which is fantastic. I do sell prints off of my website. So I have the prices for that and then people can choose if they want it framed and what size they want, that type of thing. Um, but our websites are a great way to, um, you know, some online, uh, some social media platforms might come and go or they might limit what you can put out there. But on your own website, what's really nice about that is you can control that and that's not going anywhere. So some, the pro is, of course, that you have control over it. So the cons of having your own personal art website are that you need to maintain it. Periodically, you need to refresh your artwork. Um, and then uh, also there's a cost associated with that. And typically that's going to be $40 and up um, to have your own. Like I have uh, www.dinatollefson.com, for example, to have that domain name. Um, there's a cost each year to maintain your donate domain name. So method number 14 is art commissions. And art commissions are custom art where you agree ahead of time with a client what you're going to create and the price that something's going to cost. So that's different than just creating artwork and then saying, hey, you know, so and so will you buy this? This is something where specifically um, they are contacting you or you're contacting them and you have an agreement, essentially a contract where uh, they will say, I want to have, you know, this subject and maybe these colors and do it in this style. And then you're going to create either traditional art or digital art. And then you're going to, the deliverable would be that if it's digital art, you'll give them a file. And if it's traditional art, you would give them, you know, the painting, the drawing, sculpture, whatever it is that you create. So a commission, um, you can do commissions through an intermediary like I do. Um, I work through the galleries that represent me. And sometimes they'll have a client come into the gallery and they'll say, well, I, I like this painting, but I would like to have it in, you know, different size or different colors, or I like this subject. Could this be done, you know, differently and in, in, in to their specifications? And so then the gallery will contact me and say yes, and then we work out uh, what the price is going to be and uh, when it will be done and that type of thing. And, um, and that's a way that I do commissions. I enjoy doing commissions. That's a way I can uh, do commissions with a client. What's nice about that is that um, essentially you're working in a way um, the person who ends up getting the artwork has a say in it. And, and so in a way they're helping to create it by um, making some um, decisions on how that artwork is going to come out. So I'm working with an intermediary, but you can work directly with the client uh, and do art commissions if you uh, have your own website or if you are affiliated with a website that does art commissions. So digital art, anime, traditional art on paper or on canvas, on calligraphy, pet portraits, weddings, special occasion paintings, and all of these things are great, uh, great things that can be done by commission. And most importantly, really any kind of digital art and any kind of traditional art uh, can be done through an art commission. So the pros of an art commission are that you already have a guaranteed sale when uh, before you even start the work. Um, and that's really comforting and it's nice to know that it's already, you know, it's already figured out and you don't have to wonder, you know, um, who am I going to sell this to? Now the con that goes with that is there is a lot of pressure associated with making something for, you know, somebody's expecting a certain thing, even if they already know what your art style is and what kind of colors you normally use, that type of thing. There's still always this, you know, a bit of stress like, okay, am I going to create something that someone's really going to like? So, uh, so when you are making uh, an art commission, um, you know, that can be a negative. Number 15, Patreon. So Patreon is a site, patreon.com is a site where um, artists can interact with their mega fans, uh, their, their best supporters, uh, in, a, in a way that's, that's better or more close 
than uh, just regular, you know, YouTube or Instagram or Facebook or something like that. Um, it's a way for you to connect with fans and show them, you know, behind the scenes things that are happening um, with you as an artist. Um, it's a way to show them uh, more in process work that you're working on, things that you're thinking about, things that inspire you. Um, that type of thing. So your patrons pay monthly um, to be your supporter. And what's really nice about that is as an artist, um, if you build up enough of these patrons, then it'll freeze you up to do other things as an artist that you might not be able to do. Um, in some cases, some people are full-time artists uh, because of Patreon. In other cases, it's a, you know, it's a additional money that that they have, uh, they might be able to hire an assistant to help them with certain art tasks. Um, it might be that they can buy better equipment, um, nicer, um, nicer things for filming. It might be nicer editing software, uh, that type of thing, all with the help from Patreon. So I just started my Patreon um, this past summer, and I've been really, really happy with it. Um, it's just a way to have deeper and better connection um, with some of, of your best supporters. And, and I'll say that from my own experience that um, I feel like the pros outweigh the cons, but the cons really are that you have to make, it's a lot of work. <laughs> they say on the site, oh, it's not going to be that much more work and, you know, just do the stuff that you're normally doing. But you have to make content for people that is different than what you're doing on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And so it's another, you know, set of things to do. And, and what you're going to want to show them is, is things that you aren't showing elsewhere. So, it, you know, you really want to show them unique or um, exclusive content that they aren't going to get anywhere else. So that is a lot of extra work, um, you know, to do that. But, um, but that's, that's, I'll say that that's the one con that I found with Patreon. But all the other things that I found have been, you know, very wonderful about it. Okay, so number 16, hosting workshops and art parties. So you can make a living as an artist, teaching um, workshops, uh, traveling around and making workshops, or doing workshops locally in your area. And, uh, and also uh, within workshops, there's another kind of specialty within that called an art party. So an art party, like a sip and, a sip and paint kind of event, um, is where people come and it might be like a group of people for maybe uh, they've got like a group of friends and uh, there might be some artists within this group, but you should assume that most people are not artists coming in and they are going to come in and you'll have a painting that you can, or a drawing that everybody will learn how to make. And when they're done, they can take that home and, and they can remember the special event um, through, this, uh, through this event that you're hosting. So you'll have them all make the same thing and uh, they end up having a lot of fun with that. So. So if you're the kind of person that enjoys um, interacting with people kind of in a party atmosphere um, and you enjoy teaching people um, a, a variety of skill levels from zero art skill level up to some skilled people um, all within that same group, um, then, uh, then that might be a really fun thing for you to give a try. And then also within that um, realm of like workshops and parties is face painting, uh, which is an art form all in itself. Um, and, and that also is a thing where you can be doing this for parties and for events and that type of thing. So, um, so the thing with the workshop, so the workshop, if you would do like an art workshop, that would be geared more towards more like a teaching kind of a role where you're assuming that your students um, are all interested in art and all might have some um, art experience, and then you're just teaching them some specific skills. Uh, they might be creating something there that they'll take home with them. Um, but this is a just a kind of a fun, uh, a fun, neat way to meet people, and and also something that you can do also to earn money uh, at these events. Or you can sell the supplies that are required, like a kit that are required for the event, um, and you can also sell your originals. At events like this. Well, I hope that today's video has been helpful for you and I hope that you've enjoyed it. So please uh, give me a like and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and come back and see me again soon. So until next time, it's Dina Tollefson. All my best to you. Bye-bye. 
Thank you so much, my art club members. I appreciate you.